perseverance. You could do anything to us and we're still going to be here. Today is the unofficial day of remembrance and recognition for what has happened in the boarding schools. People here are remembering the stories of lost loved ones. Makes me grateful today I'm here compared to all the ones that were taken. Stories of indigenous children stolen from their families forced into government-run boarding schools. I had that haircut too. Matilda Sampson, a grandmother and community leader, survived one of those schools. We met her here at Fort Spokane, a former indigenous boarding school. Everything was taken from me. Native boarding schools were created by the U.S. and Canadian governments in the late 1800s. The goal, according to the Department of Interior, forcibly relocating the children to schools where their identities, languages, and beliefs were to be forcibly suppressed. I wasn't used to wearing uniform clothes and not allowed to talk our language or tell our stories. There are accounts of physical and psychological abuse at these schools. Matilda, a member of a Canadian tribe called the Adam Lake Band, attended Kamloops Indian Residential School in British Columbia in the early 1970s. They always said there was children buried behind the school. The tragic hidden truth of some Native American boarding schools. More than a thousand bodies found in mass graves at schools in Canada. Seeing the headlines about the mass graves found at her old boarding school last summer brought Matilda back. When I first saw it, I was like, I couldn't believe it. It was so heartbreaking. I have a lot of hurt. Had a lot of hate. I'm angry because I was brought up with a lot of abuse. Years of alcohol abuse, a coping mechanism to drown out the unsettling memories. I spent too long in my life hating. That's not who I am today. Matilda's experience at the school was not one of a kind. There were hundreds of them across North America, including more than 350 indigenous boarding schools across the United States, mostly government funded, some run by churches. More than 60,000 Native American children were placed in these schools. That's nearly 83% of all school-aged indigenous children by the 1920s. Here we are on the Western Navajo Indian Reservation. Historic videos show those children side by side with government officials. Stripped of their native identities, their traditional songs replaced by humiliating ones. One of those schools is still open, Chamawa Indian Training School in Salem, Oregon. It started out in Forest Grove, Oregon, about 40 miles west of Portland. More than 300 indigenous children were forced to go there. Many, like these Spokane children, never made it out alive. This is a photograph of students who were en route from Spokane to the Forest Grove Indian School. Ava Gugamos is an archivist at Pacific University in the city of Forest Grove. Martha Lott, also known as Maddie Lott, died within about six months of this photograph being taken. We think it's probably her. Over the past 10 years, Ava's research has been locating the remains of indigenous children like Maddie Lott. We believe she is buried right about here. The government relocated Forest Grove to Salem in 1885 and changed the name to Chamawa Indian School. But the mistreatment of the children continued and the number of deaths rose. We're on sacred ground. Frederick Lane from the Lactamish tribe attended Chamawa in the 1980s. On Indigenous Peoples Day, Lane came to Chamawa to pay his respects. They were f***ing killed. They were somebody's child. These children were stolen. They lie right here. For half a century, they lie here, their stories buried along with them. In the 1960s, a bulldozer was sent into the neglected cemetery at Chamawa and wiped out the original headstone plates. And the plates were put back in an order that they assumed copied an old map. Sue Ann Reddick, a former Chamawa employee, was distraught about the destruction of the cemetery. These plates do not necessarily relate to the location of the remains of the children. So we're hopeful that some of this research can help narrow down what are probably unmarked graves. Sue Ann and Ava teamed up to convert old cemetery maps and information into a digital database to find unmarked graves. Based on our list of who died, these ones, we don't know where they were buried. Makes me feel sad and also, I guess, honestly, just a little bit angry that 
more wasn't done. Now, families from all over the country can find out who exactly is buried at this cemetery, their tribal affiliation, their burial location, and cause of death. To stand here and think about that family coming to this school, losing that child while they were there, it, there, there aren't any words for it. It's, it's a kind of pain that only, only parents who have lost their children can understand. You just wish somehow you could comfort somebody and maybe that is the whole purpose of the work that Ava and I are doing. We reached out to school officials to ask about Chamawa's history. They referred us to the Bureau of Indian Education, which did not respond. I guess it's bittersweet with the sad history of Chamawa Indian School. Lane says the Chamawa of today has evolved into a refuge for young Native Americans. Chamawa has enlightened my ability to move forward as an indigenous person. Today, indigenous students learn their culture and history here. The cemetery, a reminder of what the children who came before them endured. They have no voice, but their voice is right here right now through the good work that we're trying to do to protect Chamawa Indian School. I've been sober 30 years now. Today, Matilda Sampson has found strength in her recovery and healing from a past no longer buried. I just want to do the best I can with what I have and share it with others. But now I just gotta keep moving forward. Can't keep that hating because if I do, then they win.